All right, so let's make a formal introduction for our listener. Uh, good afternoon, Robert. My name is Claudio. I'm calling you from Washington, D.C. Uh, from the studio of Fairfax City, we're very humble and grateful that Robert Dean accepted our invitation to our show. Robert, welcome to the show, man. My pleasure. Robert, with, everything, with all the stuff that is going on in the world with COVID and some people here in, in, in America, they believe in the vaccine, some people don't know, some people die, and some people live in denial. You know, obviously it's affecting everybody's life. And how is that affecting your your life, your family life? You know, now you cannot uh, tour, it, you cannot go out and match houses. It, so far, it hasn't really affected me very much at all. You know, I'm vaccinated, um, but I live a relatively quiet life. You know, I mean, what what I what I'm not able to do so much is is move around as much as I used to, but. Um, but I mean, around the place I live, I just do exactly the same, you know, it's like go to the shops, go bird watching, take my dog for a walk, you know, um, see friends, not so much as I used to, but you know, um, it's, it's pretty much the same, really. Gotcha. It's the quiet life, you know, I live. I live a very peaceful life, mostly. <laughs> That's good though, yeah. compared to compared to what you what you used to do for a living yeah yeah, yeah. 50 years ago man <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely so, do you have like a, a studio at home where you do recording on you um i have a home studio home but studio, yeah. when i'm recording like properly i like to go into a proper recording studio with engineers and, and you know um i think it's important to uh to use proper proper studio facilities sure. You know, to get the best that you can out of what you're doing. You know, I, that's what I was used to years and years ago, and I still want it. I, you know, I I always feel limited by by home studio stuff, even though it's you know it's so so much better than it used to be. Um, but for me, I I still prefer like you know that extra step. Yeah, you can do kind of, and, 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 and you know, a big space where you can have live drums and, and yeah, you know, live drums, yeah, guitar and, and you can crank up the volume and you know, like a proper studio, like a proper studio. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Were you born like in a in a musical family? When how um, were you? you? You began playing, taking I don't know, piano lesson or guitar lesson at the time. How old no, were you? My sister had piano lessons, but um, but I never did, but. I was actually better at the piano than she was. Really? <laughs> even, so, even though she was the one having the lessons. I, I wasn't having the lessons, but I was kind of just by sitting and playing at the piano, I was doing better than she was. Wow. Yeah, but I never got piano lessons. Uh, what, uh, what about guitar lessons? No. Really? No. You learn on your own? Yeah. My God, man. I, fig I figured, you know, I mean, if I can do it, anybody can do it. So. Yeah, it's not that hard. <laughs> Good for you. Well, you know, some people may say, well, you know, dedication is the important thing. The important thing. Is I co I I completely I completely agree with you, Rob. But yeah. you need yeah. you need to have talent. I mean, dedication. Uh, I, I think talent. you can you can. Well, if you have the dedication, you have the talent. You know, it's, they go, they go hand in hand, really. Yeah. I mean, I don't think anybody who's meant to be a musician would be one if they didn't have the dedication to stick to it. I don't know, you know, that's, that's, not, that's what I think. I understand. So like I told you before, right? Uh, for me, uh, I don't play any instrument. No. I don't know how to read music, nothing. But I began listening to music uh, when I was probably a baby. My dad in yeah. Chile had uh, a lot of music, jazz, and tango from Argentina. Uh -huh. So I began listening to music when I was a baby. And then around 14 years, when I was 14 years old, I just called rock and roll, you know, Genesis, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, and the rest is history, man. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I have an older sister. Yeah. And so she was, she was old enough to be into like, you know, the Beatles and, you know, when yeah. they started and, and, but her favorite band was the Beach Boys. And, and she also loved Motown and, and yeah. soul music. So, 
I, I, I got a lot from her in, in that respect. But as far as uh, my own taste, that came later, you know, I, I branched out on my own really, you know, and just, well, you know, you get it from school, you know, from kids at school, you you all suddenly start discovering things. And in, in the um, mid to late sixties, I mean, there was so much to discover, you know. Oh, I mean, absolutely. It was an amazing time to, to be a, a, a school kid, I think, for music anyway. I got you. I understand. Yeah. Were you, before you joined uh, Japan, were you like in a band in high school? Um, I, I was trying. I was trying to be in bands. I, you know, I mean, I, I, we had a little band at school and then I decided that I wanted to be a guitarist. So I, so I concentrated on it very hard. And uh, I played with a couple of bands, but we never actually like, played a gig you know I mean we never got that far you know but I knew that it was what I wanted to do by that point and so I just stuck at it you know and I and I you know I took a job so that um so that I could buy the the instruments I needed to make it work for me yeah where were you uh did you uh did you um I mean, were your parents supportive? You needed to convince yes, them that they were always that, well. Once I college, university, and I can be a musician. It was a difficult conversation for for you to no, have with them, or not? It really was No, it really wasn't. They were very supportive of me. They let me do whatever I want, really. Yeah. So I didn't go to university. Yeah. I just, you know, left school at eighteen after um, A levels. They call it in England. A level, yeah. yeah. And uh, just went straight into a job, you know. Yeah. In 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 an office. And, yeah, that's what I did. Right. And then, how old were you when you ended up uh, joining the band? Did you did you, did you need to go for an audition, or how was how was the process? Yes. Yes. There, there was a, there was there was a, a music paper called Melody Maker in those days. Yeah. That was like the main the main music paper, weekly paper. And uh, they had ads for bands all the time, you know, in the back of it. And uh, I answered an ad for, for Japan. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, they weren't anybody. I, I don't think even the name was on the uh, ad, you know. It was just guitarist into Roxy Music, I think, and Bowie and Mark Bolan. And I think that's what it said in the ad, something like My that. My God, man, it would be great to see the ad somewhere. You gotta be somewhere. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I haven't got <laughs> it, but I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if one of the band has it actually somewhere in a somewhere, somewhere in the basement or something. About. Yeah, but, but not me. I don't have any of that stuff. But uh, yeah, so I just answered an ad, and I was the, I was the first one auditioning for the for the band. Yeah, and. and they just didn't bother to look for anybody else. <laughs> well, so at the time, yeah. So David and his brother, yeah. Then my car, with unfortunately, he's no longer with us. Mm -hmm. Got together. They were in the same high school, right? And then Richard Barbieri came later, right? That's is that correct? Uh, he, was, he was from the same school too. Um, oh, the same school. But he wasn't officially part of the band when I joined, I don't think. Yeah, I think the, he, he came like, after that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think he was sort of like on the on the edge of being in the band. Yeah. I, you know, um, it was very early days, you know, I mean, it was basically just friends playing together. And then, you know, I joined. I, it was actually a long way for me to go because I lived in North London and they lived in South London, which was quite a way away from each other. But um, we managed to make it work. And I was impressed because they actually had a PA system, which, you know, that was the first band that I played with, but who actually had got it together to have their own PA system. So I was very impressed. <laughs> yeah. well, you, you, you remember, you remember the, how it was like, uh, I don't know, the first, the first gig that you guys got together? Or yeah, like we, we, we did a, a uh, show at a, a local uh, uh, college, a local yep. college close to where they lived, and we were the support band to a band called the Fabulous Poodles. 
Yeah. And um, I remember that we didn't have very much space on the, on the stage. And at one point while we were playing, I think it was Steve's drums fell off. It was chaotic, but you know, it was fun because it was our first gig. So, yeah, sure. you know, I mean, we managed to have a good time anyway. I, at that point, everything, you know, playing music was, was everything. And so you enjoyed it anyway, no matter what pitfalls you made. You made but and, and, and imagine that at those days, all of you have regular jobs, right? Because you were making yeah. any money out of music. Well, right? actually, Dave, Dave, David and Mick and I think Steve was still at school, I think. Oh, you were a couple of years older than them, right? That they still didn't Yeah, Steve was still at school. Dave and Mick had left school, but they weren't working. They were, they were, um, they were oh. getting dull. They were yeah. on the dull, you know. Yeah. And Richard was working. He was working in a bank. Um, yeah. I can, I cannot I can I cannot picture Richard Barbieri <laughs> working in a bank, man. It's yeah. kind of <laughs> you got to start somewhere. <laughs> well, everybody, yeah, everybody starts somewhere, man. And I, I you know, I, w I was, of course, I would begin listening to music, I'm a, and um, you guys were, you know, you signed for a record label, and you were not doing at least the first two albums, right? Um, with the uh, adolescent sex and obscure alternative and life in Tokyo, it was, it, you guys were not doing that great, right? They didn't have any not any major in, hits at all, right? Not in England and Europe, no. But no. but um, but miraculously, it was like it was picking up in Japan. In Japan, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, we went to Japan for the first time in '79, I think. Yeah. Uh, early '79, like. January of 79 and you know I mean back back home we were playing the Marquee Club in London and and in Japan we sold out two nights at the Budokan which was my god man <laughs> which all the big bands played it <laughs> you know so it was quite unreal and then you know we had screaming girls everywhere and and, and we had to leave leave the hotel by special secret entrances and <laughs> It was crazy. It was crazy, but but it was um, it was good for us because it it kept us going. Of you know, course, yeah. just just the 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 um, the profile in Japan was enough to keep us going. Struggling, however we were, you know, in in like England and Europe. Europe was picking up. Europe wasn't doing so bad. You know, we we were getting something of a reputation in Holland and Germany and. Uh, Belgium, France, yeah. you know, but um, but England was tough. But it was also tough because, you know, we were we were a band at the same time as as the Sex Pistols and the Damned, you know, and that everything was changing in 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 England, especially in London, and we weren't really fitting into that at that point. You were yeah. competing with so many different great bands as well that it was yes. hard to and make the live, a... The live scene was incredibly vibrant. I mean, there was so much that you could go and see, you know, like every pub had, had bands on in those days. Um, but it was, it was a different type of band to what we were. We were sort of, we weren't a punk band. We weren't a new wave band. We were something of a throwback really um you know i mean we were a rock band really with a bit of funk in it um and we were trying to be experimental but but we were learning as we were going on you know and um yeah so it's almost like we started at the wrong time <laughs> yeah but not for japan not for the country yeah for yeah yeah i, I read that you guys did very very well like three back-to-back -back shows or something like that you did very well so they give you enough money to keep keep going for another six months or whatever because we were they, able to survive yeah i mean the record company um they they financed us to a certain degree but they could only do so much right yeah. um they could buy us onto tours like you know 
something's wrong with my screen. Yeah, the, the camera, I think you have like a lighting coming. The, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's great. Oh, yeah. The light's changing. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, the, the, the regular label could support you that much, right? And then after that, they need to let you go, right? Yeah, and then you have to live from day to day, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's not cheap living in London. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Man. absolutely. Then, you know, yeah. yeah. Then, but, then and now, London is very, very expensive to live. People are like, crazy. Yeah. I've been there many times and it's crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, people think that living in New York is crazy. Well, I'll go to London, my friend. Yeah. You know, it's, it's it's crazy the rent. So many people don't live there, right? They take the train in the morning, right? They That's live outside. Right. Yeah. They work in the city, but they live somewhere else. Yeah, most of my friends, most of the people I knew in yeah. London now don't live in London. Yeah. They live outside. Yeah. Yeah. And then you were with Japan for the other three albums, right? The Quiet Life, mm -hmm. I Second That Emotion, and then Gentleman Take Polaroids, right? And then yeah. toward, toward the end, right, toward the end of the period before you end up leaving the band, they began growing popularity in the yeah. UK, some, some top 40s, I think, or... Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I left at the wrong time, but, you know, that's the way it goes. <laughs> you, you don't mind if I ask you what, what happened? Why did you decide uh, to leave? Or? It was just... Or a combination uh, of different things. Like. Yeah, you know, I mean, the, the, it was getting harder and it was getting more electronic and it was getting harder and harder for me to find parts that worked with the songs that I was happy with, you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was just moving in a direction that wasn't really comfortable for all of us, I suppose. You, um, you wanted to, I think uh, you want to have more Kind of solo part and more guitar, and they were going more well, into I, electronic I, I, I keyboards. I certainly didn't want to be dictated as to what I did. Gotcha. You know, I wanted to have my own my own freedom to create what I wanted, and I did up until that point. But I realised it was going to get harder, and yeah, so you know, it was time to move on anyway. You know, and and then when you after you left, is that the, the time that Richard joined the band, kind of full time or no? No, or no, no. Richard, Richard was was in the band almost from the start. Good, yeah. But but um, but not when I auditioned. Okay, I got you. So later on, right? Yeah. But he joined pretty much straight after, really. Um, so he's been in the band as almost as long as I have, or maybe he has been as long, but he 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 wasn't. Uh, he wasn't there when I, when I, uh, you know, when I auditioned and when we originally talked about it. Or he wasn't there. But yeah, I have, <clears throat> I have a great admiration for David Sylvian, of course. And mm -hmm. but he wasn't that. He was singing at the time, but I don't know if could, somebody could have anticipated that he will go. Japan will banish, and then he launch his solo career well playing with his brother in drums and stuff like that i think any any um any any singer with a with a with a strong profile is, is bound to go into some sort of like solo career oh, yeah, yeah yeah i mean the the path it takes well who knows you know um but i mean for for him he he didn't want to go the particular a particularly commercial path, you know, which I admire him for that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, right. So on one side, right, you go commercial and versus no going commercial and then yeah. gamble, gamble in a way, go solo with playing his brother playing drums and then you know take a take a take a gamble and, and then see how it goes. But he it well, works think, out well for him, you know. I think he I think he um he did it all from his head and heart, you know. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he really thought about um, the situation. He just went for it, you know. And and as his career furthered on, it got a bit more esoteric and, and experimental. Yeah. And, um, you know, I mean, a lot, a lot of the music I listen to now is very experimental. Um, 
so I can admire him for that. Yeah. I know he's, uh, David, I know he's kind of quiet and he's not, of course, after he decided, I don't know if it's true or not, but not to anymore. And he keep like a low profile. And, Very low profile. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I need to respect that. I, I reach out to, well, his website a couple of times and of course, no, no response, you know. Maybe one day I will have the opportunity to have all of you. On, on one. I don't know about that. That would that, that, be hard. That would be really hard. But you, you're not in touch with those people anymore? No, you uh, don't. Get, I'm, in don't? I'm in touch with Richard, yes. Richard uh, Bevere, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, we don't speak all the time or anything. But send emails or whatever. But, you know, I mean, it's like, yes, we're, we're in touch, but I, I don't necessarily feel that we have to be. I mean, it's so long ago. I mean, I've been living in Costa Rica for 30 years for a start, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know too many people from 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Any, you know. And also, you know, sometimes for any, if, even if it was five years ago, right? You mm -hmm. know, uh, sometimes some bands, when they've played out, they, they hear one another or whatever, they go a different way. And, you know, yeah. They're, they're never, yeah. So, like, like, a, like a divorce. Yeah. <laughs> a man marriage, you know, you don't want to... It absolutely is. I mean, I mean, yeah. for the time you're in a band, you're in each other's pockets for, you know, 24-7, you right. know? It's crazy. And that gets tough after a while. Yeah, I can totally understand why bands sit up. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's way too intense after yeah, a while. Yeah, exactly. That intense yeah. is the right word. So, yeah. me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan, right? I'm a, sure. I'm, you know, I'm a consumer of your music, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, you get you know why Les Zeppelin break up or why Pink Floyd Les Zeppelin broke up or whatever. Right. You know, when when you've been with someone for you know five years or whatever, you know they and they now touring here, same hotel, the same life. Man, you just start people start pissing you off, you know. And it's, what the heck? I, I yeah. want to do my own thing. They want me to do this type of music. I don't like the type of music. I want to do solos. Yeah. I want to, you know. And, but it's like living with anybody, you know. The, your little idiosyncrasies that that person might have just yeah. they get worse and worse. you know um, the interactions you have with them you things about them annoy you and you know and they get more annoying as time goes on and you, you know, it's just That's life true. you know it's rare you can find people that you can actually be with all the time forever yeah. Yeah, everybody has got their own. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you're saying, man. I, I mean, you know, this, you know, one thing working like in a company where you go, you are there, whatever, eight to four or nine to five, and then you go home and you don't need to see your boss anymore. Or, or, yeah. or did they, but in a band, you guys are day in and day out, touring together, traveling together. And, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, it, yeah. it's, it's a complicated, Anyway, yeah. and so after after leaving that, you end up, um, you know, feel free to all my questions are kind of um, obviously I want to get to know you as a person, but you know, feel free to elaborate on the question. Most of the questions are open ended. Uh, feel free sure. to elaborate on your involvement with uh, Gary Newman in 81, 82. Are you okay? Yeah, I think you got frozen for a minute. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you know, after leaving after leaving Japan, feel free to elaborate on the collaboration that you did with Gary Newman in 81, 82. Okay, well, what happened when I left Japan, um, yeah. I, I moved to Los Angeles. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, pretty soon after. Um, I, you know, I met on the on the brief times that that we'd worked in, in the US, I, you know, I befriended uh, some people. And so um, they had a band called Viva Beat. And so I, I moved over to LA and started working with them. They didn't have a record deal, but it was just, you know, just working together on, on stuff and playing some gigs. And um, during that time, I, I, I bumped into Gary Newman. Um, we had, I should say that we, we had worked together briefly before that on the dance album. Um, Nick and I, you know, played on that. So I knew him vaguely. Also, 
um, he he came to Japan when we were on tour one time, but that's another story. But um, so I did know him, but not really very well. And anyway, so I bumped into him in Los Angeles and um, we said hello. And the first thing he said to me was, do you want to be in my band? Wow. I was like, oh, I'm, you know, he said, yeah, I'm going to go on tour and, and you know, I'm, I'm going to be rehearsing soon and I need a guitarist. And uh, I said, well, let's, you know, let's get together and talk about it. Sure. So he invited me to, to the place he was renting, the house he was renting in, in, in Hollywood. And, um, and we, we talked about what he wanted to do. And I, I agreed to do the tour. So um, we rehearsed quite solidly for about almost two months, I think. And that was myself and Pino Palladino and um, uh, Chris Slade, who's, who's been the drummer with uh, uh, Manfred Manzo's band. Well, I think he was doing stuff with ACDC at that point. Oh, the band The Firm, he was in that band The Firm with Jimmy Page. And, um, and Roger Mason, who was a keyboard player from uh, Australia, who Carrie had worked with on a couple of albums, I think. So anyway, so that was the basis of the band. And then we rehearsed for, yeah, almost two months, I think. And then we did this tour of the States for, which was about a couple of months, I suppose. Um, going to a lot of places I'd never been, which was good, you know, got to see New Orleans and um, some places in Texas that I would never have seen otherwise. Um, it, it was interesting tour. It was, it was a strange tour in, in that, uh, he wasn't that big in the US really at that point. And so the places we were playing were kind of either too big for the audience he was getting or, uh, or they had to be uh, downsized, you know, like instead of playing a theater, we'd be playing a club and, Stuff like that. How many people was it? Five hundred thousand? We go see. In, in uh, I think in in the big cities, you know, like San Francisco and Los Angeles and New York, we would play to a fairly large audience, uh, probably around a thousand or so. But then in other places, we would play to like five hundred. Oh, well. yeah. Do you ever have you been here in Washington D.C. or no? Have you? Oh yes, yes. We played in Washington. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. Gary, Gary I, knew. I can't remember where we played actually in Washington. I can't remember, but uh, yeah, we played in Washington. Yeah, well, Gary, Gary Newman is going to be in town uh, September twenty something. I, I'm going to go and see him. Uh -huh. I, I never, I never seen Gary Newman, and I have seen, you know, close to um, over a thousand shows in my life. Yeah, different yeah. bands obviously, and. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be seeing him in a couple, I don't know, in mid-September, mid-20, in a club night 30. So I'm looking forward to it, right? Having a bit of resurgence at the moment, so we'll probably get a pretty good crowd, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, he, people are, no, he's playing in a small club. It's, I think um, 1,500 or so. Well, it's not so loud yet, so yeah. It, oh, yeah. it, he's, he's popular in the United States, but not, not as much as in the UK or in Europe. No, no, yeah. Yeah. But I like you know, his music. I, one day I want to look back in my life, Rover, and I want to say, man, I saw every band, the best band in the world. So Every band, huh? Well, the top, the best one. I, for yeah. example, right, I never saw Japan. I never seen David Sylvian. Right. I never seen Les Zeppelin as a, you know, as Les Zeppelin. I have seen individual them, right? right. Pink Floyd, and never seen them completely. Really? Uh, never seen Pink Floyd. No, they, they split out, broke up, and... Yeah, uh, I, I saw all those bands in the 70s. Good for you, man. I saw Led Zeppelin twice, The Who twice, um, you know, all of them, really. With the good lineups, you know, Jeff Rotal, I bet, you know. Wow, good for yeah. you, man, yeah. All that Pink Floyd, Queen. My God, man, yeah, Queen. <laughs> 
queen of course i never saw them yeah man that's you know if i could go back in life and see all the stuff i would i would die you know peter gabriel with genesis and everything. of course i see peter gabriel but can sell a genesis i can sell but dog not to wear it gabriel with genesis once yeah. yeah and i've seen him solo like every tour up until so so was the last tour i saw and i saw all the tours big big peter gabriel fan um genesis is going to be touring here in the united states um Oh yeah, that's not the genesis I want to know about. <laughs> October and November. I'm seeing them like I'm seeing them like three times. Well, no, no, you know, I don't, I don't Phil, need that one. <laughs> you know, Phil Collins Core cannot play drum. His kid is playing drum and yeah. Tony Tony Bank is there, Mike Rutherford, you know, but still I want to see them. Yeah. No, I'm I'm not a fan of Phil Collins as a singer. I think yeah. he's you know better behind the drums. Well, if you, if you change your mind, you have a place to to sleep here, man. Yeah. <laughs> so well, maybe some other time when somebody good is playing. <laughs> well, it's a lot of people coming this way, man. Yeah, I bet. I mean, they're all going to come now, aren't they? I mean, once, yeah, once people, they can, people, it's going to be a flood. Yeah, people people are September 1st. People are going crazy. They want to see yeah. live. They want to see shows. Huh? All the, all the, the uh, King Crimson are playing soon. You don't see them? Uh, of, of course, I'm seeing King Crimson twice. And I'm seeing them here in DC, uh, September 11, I think, September 17. Oh. And, uh, and then two a week before, I'm seeing them somewhere else. It's like a Saturday, four hours from here. So I will drive, right. see them live, and then drive back or something like that. Yeah. I like them, man. I, I saw them at the, the Rolling Stones in Hyde Park in 1969. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. and, and also I saw the... Uh, Discipline lineup. Um, when they were called Discipline, actually, they weren't called King Crimson yet. Yeah. When they first, you know, toured. Have you, have you ever met Robert, Robert Fripp now? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, um, I, I met him at a dinner party. A friend of mine had a dinner party. And yeah. He was invited. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, if you, if you, if you change your mind, Rob, you always have a place to sleep here, man. Okay, thank you. I own a big house here. You know, you kind of work. Right. All right. So after that, you after Gary Newman, you end up um, uh, joining uh, Shenando Connor and the the Lion and the Cobra LP, yeah. and you were yeah, a, a, a on that, guitarist. So huh? Worked on that for about. Um, I worked with Sinead about eighteen months, I think. Um, for the first year, it was really just working on material um and a record company ensign was basically getting her ready you know to be an artist kind of thing because she, she was completely new at that point i mean she you know her experience was 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 very limited to begin with um but it was a great period for me. I, I loved working with her. She was she was absolutely wonderful, um, and um, very magnetic character. I mean, it, it was her her talent was just undeniable. Really, yeah. And she was just great. I loved I loved working with her, and um, yeah, doing the album was great too. Enjoyed that. Did you end up touring with, with her? As, or no. Uh, uh, what happened was we recorded the album. Yeah. And uh, she became pregnant. And so it was agreed with her and the record company that she not release the album until after she had the baby. Okay. So um, this was a considerable amount of time. You know, this was like six to eight months, maybe more. You know, maybe ten months. I don't know. Um, and in during that time, I I, uh, I moved to Australia. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. What were you, do? what were you doing started, there, man? I started my own band then. Well, I, I I was invited to do a tour with this band, um, and we worked. Uh, we toured for uh, I don't know about five months, something like that. And during that time, I got, I got uh, interest in my, my songs. 
and um, so I got I got signed to a publishing deal, and then the plan was to create a band around my material. So that's uh, why I moved to Australia. Why I stayed there. I was there about four years. Do you like yeah. it living there? It was great. It was I've never really been there, man. Yeah, it's, it's, I was in Melbourne. It's it's a really really good city on very fertile musically um yeah. great restaurants i mean just the whole scene there especially at that time anyway was really great i really enjoyed living there um and so yeah i had my own band um we were called the slow club and uh we produced one album we were signed to virgin and uh we toured you know we toured you can tour a lot in australia <laughs> you know they they like live music, yeah. um, and yeah, we you know did a few uh, support tours. We toured with uh, Steve Winwood at one point, and uh, uh, we had a single which went top twenty. <laughs> and that's as far as it got, and uh, wow. yeah, we never got to do a second album. But. Will be will be good to uh, I know. Get, get, drive to you know catch a flight to Albert you know and and then um, and then get a car and then drive around man <laughs> uh, around the coast a, would be great huh it's a huge country you have no idea yeah we'll take them no it's a couple huge. months yeah um, okay. probably more than that I would say. Well, you probably couldn't do it anyway. You probably couldn't drive around the coast. Yeah, some areas, but yeah, it's um, yeah, that would be that would be great. Yeah. For that time. yeah. So anyway, so I I went to Australia, and uh, that was an interesting time in my life. And then uh, I moved back to England after that. Yeah. And uh, I. Didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I, I, I uh, first thing I did when I moved back to England was I, I went to uh, Peru and Bolivia on holiday for six weeks, places I'd never been that I'd always wanted to be. I had this fascination with Latin America, and I'd never been to any of it. And the closest I'd been was like, you know, from. Um, from San Diego and, you know, just going over the border into, um, yeah, just going over the border into Mexico there. That's all I'd ever done. And uh, yeah, I was fascinated with Latin America. So I went to Peru and Bolivia and just had an amazing time. And when I got back to England from that trip, all I wanted to do was see more of Latin America. Yeah. So, um, at this point, my band in Australia was still going. I was just basically over there because I needed to renew visas and stuff like that. But uh, I basically told them I wasn't coming back <laughs> and that uh, I needed to get, see more of Latin America. Good for you, man. And you, you never, you never, so you never end up going to Chile? Come on, man. That's I'm, the most beautiful place in the world. I, 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 I need, I need to take you there, man. Yeah, I've been to like I've been to Ecuador like six times. Yeah. I've been to Colombia. I've been to Venezuela. Yeah. Uh, I've been to Brazil. Yeah. Um, but I haven't been to Chile or Argentina yet. Yeah. How How's your Spanish, by the way? Living in Costa Rica. It's pretty good. All right. Good I'm for a bit you. Lazy, you know. I mean, I can speak it, but I'm I'm lazy. Ah, uh, that's okay. That's okay. And a lot of people here, I live in a tourist town, so a lot of people speak English too. English, right? So, yeah. So, unless you have to do it. And then after Chanel O'Connor, you were, I, I was reading that you you were involved with um, with Steve Johnson as well, Barbieri and well, Mick Carr, helping now in different, different. That was just a one off thing. I, I was coming back, you know, by that point, I was living in Costa Rica and uh, I was. I was going back to England for a visit for, you know, like three weeks or something. And um, so Mick and Steve and Richard asked me if I wanted to play on a track on this record they were doing. So, so I did that. 
I think that uh, record is called beginning, beginning to Melt, right? Yeah. Yeah. But at that point, uh, I wasn't really playing guitar at all. Um, so I was very rusty when I, when I did that. Really? Yeah, yeah really rusty. I, hadn't, <laughs> I, I don't think I played any guitar for like two years at that point. Wow. Um, no, I was living in a, in a, a wooden cabin uh, near a beach in the jungle in Costa Rica, you know. I was, I was having an alternative lifestyle for a change. <laughs> wow. And having a great time. I, I was loving every second of it, really. Yeah. By the way, did that, that is, a, I, I have that album, The Beginning to Melt. That's, that's a very good album, actually. I, I like that. That's got Steve Wilson on it, too. Yeah, Steve correct. I, I met him around that time. I'm not sure if I met him while they were recording that. I think I did, actually. I think that's what happened. I think I, did, I was reading that they, they released that in a record label. I think it's called Medium Production. And they ended up that, releasing another stuff. I need to, I don't have any of them. That, any was of the, by, that was one by a friend of mine, an old friend of mine. Medium? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they don't exist anymore. I don't, I don't know what the, uh, what the story is as far as, you know, uh, the availability of those albums. I know that they end up releasing a lot of stuff. Yeah. Fair I, enough. I wouldn't, yeah. You know, they gotta be somewhere. Maybe I would, I would check it out on the, on the internet to see what else. I'm yeah. always, I'm always buying music, man. Mm -hmm. I have a lot and I'm always buying, I make room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm always, I'm always want to listen to new stuff. And uh, I, I know a lot of people like you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I have, I don't know, like a 5,000 CDs, like a 3,000 vinyl, a thousand uh, Blu-rays. Are, are, are you one of these, these um, vinyl junkies now? Of course, yeah, of course. Like it's, buying all the different new pressings. And, and yeah, that. I do, and I have four floors, you know, a stair in each room, in each floor. That, wow. You know, I, I when I say I like music, I, I, I mean that. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's important. It give me uh, music has given me a lot of satisfaction in my life. Rob, you know, you know. So I, although I, as I mentioned to you, I, I don't play any instrument. I don't know how to read music. Going to a live gig and seeing a play, you yeah. know, playing somebody playing live that would be that is great for me, man. So I cannot complain. And then so you end up uh, feel free to elaborate. And um, I think I don't know how to pronounce it. Viva Beat is that the one that was supported by um, by Peter Gabriel. Yeah, he got them signed to Chrysalis, but that was before I was involved with them. Yeah, before, um, yeah. They had an album in the mid to late eighties, I think. Yeah. Um, on Chrysalis, that that Peter Gabriel uh, uh, got the deal for them. Um, but yeah, my involvement was later. Yeah. And um, it's only really available on that one compilation that I mentioned to. Uh, I, I think the big hit was the, the house is burning i think or oh, well the house is burning was was a, was a song that appears in a um a brian de palma movie brian de palma, the movie butter, butter double right that's a great movie right? yeah yeah so i'm in body double <laughs> good for you man not, that's I'm a great movie man on the video on the tv that he's watching <laughs> event they mention your name no, no, but you can see me on, on the TV screen. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a well, weird movie, that one. It's it's a bit sick, that movie. <laughs> yeah, it is, but it's a, it's a good movie. So then, then you end up, you, you, you know, le you left all the big cities and out Melbourne and London, and you you end up moving to Costa Rica and, and, and live there <laughs> ever since. What was yeah. the, the main reason? You like the, why Costa Rica, not Colombia, for example, that you were... They uh, all just kind of fell into place, you know. I, I was looking for something totally different, and the right sort of opportunities came up that I could actually say to myself, "Oh, this could work. I could actually live here." You know, I felt comfortable. I felt comfortable there straight away. You know, you you visit some places and you just know straight away, yeah. instinctively that. That, you know, it's the right sort of place for you. 
And that's how I felt with Costa Rica. So I managed to make it work. And then um, I started bird watching. And uh, you, you became like an il illustrator as well, no? Yes. That you came up I started bird watching. Firstly, I started bird watching and I was like, fascinated by all the amazing birds I was seeing. And, yeah. uh, and then I decided to start painting. Them. And, uh, you know, to cut long stories short, someone asked if I would like to uh, illustrate a field guide to the birds of Costa Rica. And I said yes, and you know that that meant I had to do about one thousand five hundred paintings <laughs> of birds you know, for the book. Yeah, and, um, and I did that, and then from that came another one, and from that came another one, and another. One. Oh, this is this is Layla. Say hello. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and it just snowballed from there, really, and. So I became an authority on Costa Rican births. Who knew? Good for you. How many books have you published? Uh, seven or eight, I think. Are you, are you, you selling a lot of books? It, it sells? Or? Yeah, I mean, the, the field guide, I mean, it's it's the field guide for, for birds of Costa Rica. So, yeah, it sells very well. Yeah. Wow. You can... Uh... Why, why, why bird? Why, what was the fascinating? Well, the thing is, if you, if you live in a place like this, yeah, the wildlife is all around you. You can't sure. really miss it, you know. Sure. So you either get, start to get interested in in it, or you don't. And I, I, I you know, I, I bought, I bought a book on birds, and I studied it and decided, oh, I want to see that one. I want to see that one. I want to see that one. Yeah. And before you know, you're out every day you know looking at birds and it's it's a fabulous pastime it's a very relaxing thing to do yeah yeah i, I feel i feel it has rewarded me you know 500 percent yeah good for you what about i know you have done other work after that but it the people still other decisions still call you if you want to, if you're playing, if you're around, if you, or you, no, or you decided really. to kind of close it's that, close to the it's chapter in your life. Huh? Yes, yeah, too late for that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I get the odd offer for something, but it's rare that I agree to do something. You know, I know I could do it, like, you know, I can do it from here now. You know, if somebody wants me to play on something, I can do it from, from Costa Rica. I don't have to go over to, wherever go, the go back to happen. london or something yeah yeah but um no i don't get that many offers really but that's okay you know i don't need it. yeah I, I i have the opportunity to listen to the album uh, live day with uh, isaac uh, moraga uh-huh and that's a very good album actually thank you very good album thank you you know i so the obvious question for you didn't play for, I don't know, like maybe 10, 15 or 20 years. You did other, you know, the well, Costa Rica I, thing. I, and then all of a sudden, huh? I did actually play in the last, you know, this century. I have been playing, but I've just been playing for fun. For fun, yeah. Playing with friends for fun. Yeah. Um, doing community um, shows. Like, like I, I organized um, a series of, Beatles shows, you know, for the community. Yeah. For our, our little community, you know, over the years. So I, I'm, I'm sort of known here for, for doing the, getting all these musicians together and getting these shows together. We haven't done any for a while, but, but yeah, so I, I, I have been playing. Yeah. But, um, but I haven't been creating up until, you know, a couple of years ago. Yeah. Well, by the way, as I mentioned before, that album is great. It's different. I, I really liked it. You know, I, yeah. I was, uh, I'm so, I was surprised. You know, but, but because not, not what you expected. Because sometimes when meet with people, you know, decided for many reasons, you know, close the chapter of music and then do something else for a living. Yeah. I, I always thought that that people say, yeah, I don't, you know, I wanna that's. I'm done with the music career. I want to do other things. And 
and I listen to their album with an open mind, right? And I love electronic music. I love electronic, and uh, I was very. It's a, it's a very good album, you know. It was a fun album to make. It's a fun album, yeah. It was. It was. It was uh, very impromptu. I mean, everything just was like, you know, like we went in with not really strong ideas about what we wanted to do, other than. Um, it was a lot of improv, you know, a lot of improvisation. Yeah. In the album. Uh, it just, you know, how about this? How about that? And we just put all things from everywhere, you know. And it, it was a very free record. It was a very free, easy record to make. It was organic. It just came out of it. You know. any, any opportunity with doing a, a second one with uh, Isaac Moraga? Yeah, it's quite possible, yeah. I don't I mean, know. I, I don't know. If he, is, he, is he is he from Costa Rica or no? Yeah, he's Costa Rica. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The thing is, I mean, everything's ground to the halt over the last, you know, yeah. year. Yeah. So um, it's it's almost like starting again, really, or it feels like it, you know. But yeah, I mean, there'll be other stuff. Yeah. If you if you if you look back in your life, um, Rob. What do you think will be your top three, you know, important band to you or musical influences, if you will? Oh, the bands that the the all, all in your in your career as a musician, right? So, you mean ones that I've been involved with? Not necessarily. Okay. So, well, I mean, you know, that those four guys. The Beatles, there, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're the most important thing to me. Have you ever you saw them live or no? No. 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 Um, I've seen Paul McCartney live uh, gotcha. a, week, a couple of times, three times, I think, actually. Um, and I, I met him, I've met him a few times um, at Air Studios. He was there oh. while we were recording. He was great. He was very friendly. He came into our studio and listened to what we were doing, and, you know, gave us advice. And he was great. I mean, good for you, man. Yeah. You know, it, it was a good experience having him there. And that was when Linda was still alive and uh, and she was wonderful. They were a wonderful couple. Yeah, um, so anyway, the Beatles, they're very important to me. Um, I think probably Joni Mitchell. Yeah, Joni Mitchell, well, yeah. yeah. She's important. Miles Davis, he's important. Um, magazine, they're very important to me. It's one of my favorite bands. Um, Fripp is important to me. Yeah, those are big names. Yeah, what about any any band that you, going back in time, obviously, you wish the opportunity to have played with or been involved with any particular? Well, I would love to have played with Kate Bush. Oh, well, yeah. That would have been fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know she's, about she's, she's another. I would love to play with Joni Mitchell. With Joni Mitchell, yeah. yeah is, is Joni Mitchell, that. she's still alive, right? She's. Yeah. Yeah, she's kind of old now, but. Um, yeah. She's, uh, Getting on for 80, I think. 80 something, right? Yeah, I have I'm several records. 80, I don't think, but she's getting there. Yeah. Yeah, she's getting there. And uh, yeah, her music is great. A lot of a lot of people mention Johnny, Johnny Mitchell. All the people that have interviewed several, you know, guitar play that they, they mentioned Johnny Mitchell as an inspiration. Kate yeah. Bush is another another person who is um I think uh, the last time she toured about six years ago. Yeah. She did like 10 gigs in, in London, I think. Um, oh, it was more, it was more, it was like 25 or something. No, 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 no. She, she toured about eight years ago. She no, sold no, out it, like 10 shows no, in London. Was, no, it was, it was almost a month. Oh, in yeah. Hammersmith. Uh, Hammersmith. Yeah. The Hammersmith. And then, and then she disappeared again. Yeah, and that's, yeah. But that's Kate Bush for you. 
They don't, why, why is that? Why do you think that? Uh, they, because they, they, huh? Because, because she, she can't. Can. Right? You know, she can make <laughs> her own decisions. If she doesn't want to do anything, she doesn't have to do it. And somebody to, you know, for where a, a record label or a, a producer, I will, I will, I will tell them to, hey, you, you need to go on tour, you need to do something. Easy yeah, for me to say. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, going on tour is, is tough, can be tough, I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's very invigorating. And, you know, play, playing to positive audiences is amazing. But, but the actual, you know, physicality of it. I mean, I think most musicians will tell you that it's not easy. Mm. You know, some people need the money that that uh, so they need to go on to other people say, yeah, no, no, I'm doing OK. I don't want to do it. Huh? These days, especially. I mean, it's where bands make money these days. Yeah. Nobody sell. you know. Yeah used to be that you get a percent of the record deal, the record label, no anymore. People make money when they tour. So exactly. if somebody doesn't want to tour. And, like unless, the tour and merchandise, that's where they make money. Yeah, the merchandise, yeah. yeah. People, are, at least, I don't know in the London, but people here in the in United States will will pay any money for to see Kate Bush or to see David Silver, no, no matter the price. Like, yeah. like, for example, good, a good example would be Genesis, right? So, mm -hmm. of course, Phil Collins doesn't play drum anymore. His son is playing. They're getting all, and they can charge whatever they want, whether it's 200, 300, 400, or whatever, whatever people would pay that. So it's, you know, the same. If, if Kate Bush announced, you know, 10 gigs here in the United States, the thing will go yeah. all out in a couple of days. David Silvan, the same, in a couple of days. So there's mm -hmm. some people, you know, yeah. that, you know, it's good to be, like you say, because she can. She doesn't, want to. Yeah, she doesn't have to play. She doesn't have to do anymore, man. Yeah. Um, looking back at your career, kind of a trivia question, any particular concert that you you will never forget, for good or for bad, that you say, man, everything clicked at night? I think, I think, I think the first time we played the Budokan was a very special. Budokan, yeah, in, in, in Tokyo. Because, because, you know, I mean, it was a, um, entirely new experience for all of us. I mean, you know, playing to 10,000 people for the first time, yeah. with, the, with them all screaming and cheering and stuff. It's kind of, you know, an out of body experience really. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm surprised after, you know, three, three sold out shows, I think it was, uh, you guys didn't end up staying there, you know? They were popular. Actually, at, one point, at one point, there were there were discussions about moving there. Really? But, uh, yeah. Yeah, but I I I wasn't keen on that idea. Um, I, I I thought it was probably best to just go and visit. You know, but it didn't happen anyway. So. But uh, David Sylvian ended up playing many years with uh, uh, Ryushi Sakamoto, right? So. Hmm. So he, 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 he. Oh, I mean, yeah, I'm sure he's been there lots of times. Huh? Yeah. I'm sure he's been there lots of times. Yeah. Yeah. Years, you know? yeah. Like, I, mean, I don't know if you, if you know Ryuchi Sakamoto, he's great too. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, we worked in the studio together. So, yeah. And he, he, the first, we first met Ryuchi when he interviewed us for a Japanese um, music magazine. Really? That's how we met Luigi. Yeah. My God, man. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, I have, I have great admiration for the guy as well. Of course. Oh yeah. I would love to have the opportunity to interview one day if it's possible. Very unlikely, but. But. Doesn't he uh, live in New York now? Huh? Doesn't he live in New York now? Yeah, but. Uh, I I reach out to his management company. He had like an operation recently, like a couple of them. And he kind of he's not doing interviews. He do on and off show, one off. He was in in Finland a couple of weeks ago doing some. Uh -huh. I don't know, like it was like a festival music related stuff. Uh -huh. um, I know he has an apartment in New York. He goes to Austin, but yeah. he's one of this similar to Sylvian, right? He's kind of quiet person. Doesn't yeah. want to do interview that much. Doesn't want to tour that much and. You need to respect that, you know. 
It's sure. not good for me, but I need to respect them, you know, the privacy of sure. yeah. people. But yeah. if we're up to me, yeah, I love his work. I love it. Yeah. He he's uh, he's he's great, man. And um so um I have only a couple more questions. So what 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 is what is what is coming up from for you, Rob? Any 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 possibility of you know touring with the three guys with Isaac doing another record? Well, as I said about touring, um it's tough. <laughs> but and, local local stuff in Costa Rica, you know. Yeah, I mean we played one gig. We have played one gig. Yeah. Uh, at a at a fest a local festival here. Um and that was fun, but um tour, touring, I mean that means a lot of um rehearsal. The band are in San Jose. It, Isaac's in the San Jose area. I'm in Monteverde, which is quite away from, you know, it's like three hour drive away. Yeah, we're driving, yeah. So the logistics of, of rehearsing and all that is kind of hard. Um, I think the possibility of, an, of another album is much more likely than, than touring. Yeah. Um, you know, also, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting older. It's, it's getting... <laughs> Come on, man. You're you know, still... The idea of, you know, traveling around in a, in a bus, you know, with... <laughs> I don't think I can do that. <laughs> well, you used to do that when you were going from, you know, South London to North London. Oh, of course, of course. You were, you were 18 years, 20 years old, you know. Yeah, I don't think I could you do can't, that. You can't do that anymore. <laughs> you know, you know any? at the same time, I never thought that I would record any new music again up yeah. until like two, three years ago. So yeah. things can change. So I'm not ruling it out completely. You know, I put a lot to chance. You know, yeah. whatever happens, whatever happens. If your if, if your if your music is in bad camp, are you selling record or a little bit or or no? Yeah, yeah you know, I mean, we're we're doing okay. We're breaking even. Yeah, I mean, we're not not making a lot of money, but we're we're, we're managing yeah. to make it work. Well, you us. you're making quite sure you're making a lot more money with the you know working as. Uh, Ornithologies and all, all the books that you Yeah, that's actually probably more successful. Or, or 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 as a as a you know guide, you know, showing different birds and stuff like that. Yeah, I I'm, I'm not a guide. I don't No, you I, don't do that. I did do some guiding before, but uh, I decided it wasn't for me. So I don't do it. Yeah. But of course you're well I'm just you're, with the, you're there with the binoculars. Yeah. Walking around and doing exercise. Yeah. Yeah. Well okay. You know, huh? keeping fairly fit yeah keep it fit yeah that's what you gotta do man with all the bad food that you drink that you eat uh here in united States and, and and all the all the beer that you drink you know when it's, when it's hot here yeah. well robert robert it was very very nice talking to you man you're yeah. a great person and i if you know if you change your mind you want to see cream so you want to see genesis you know well, you send me an email you have, you have a huh Crimson will be more attractive than Genesis. I well, think. let me know. I'm going to be uh, having dinner with one of the. I interview um, uh, who interview a couple months ago. I interviewed one of the um, the lead singer, Jaco. I forgot his last oh, name. Jaco, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we wanna get when he he. I think at December 17. I need to look it up. He we wanna get together for dinner that night. So, so if you wanna come, you're you know you're free to. Washington in December. <laughs> in September, September. Yeah. But um, I think you got frozen for a while. I think, uh, yeah, you got frozen for a while. You're good. good. No, it, it isn't. It isn't September. Oh, it's September. Yeah. No, it's, it's, September is very nice. It's like. Um, no, I've been I've been in New York in, 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 in you know, seventy seventy five degrees. Yeah. yeah, I've been I've been there in September. Yeah, right. Well, maybe when if I you know if I go there to Costa Rica one day and never been there, we'll you know we we'll get not together for far, dinner, man. huh? It's not that far. No, yeah, we will get far from where you are. No, we'll get together, man. I wanna you know for, yeah. for dinner or something, man. 
Okay. Well, let, let's stay in touch, uh, Rob, because um, you know, after I send you this the link to the interview, definitely I want to get buy some of your music and stuff like that, and cool. you know, for my own personal collection, I have. <laughs> right. So it was very nice talking to you, Rob. You're a great person, yeah. man, and keep it up, man. Keep on playing, man. I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> And stay fit, man. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Take care of yourself, brother. Welcome. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, man.